Hi, I'm Tristel. I'm a total amateur when it comes to electronics, but I'm trying to learn. And today we're going to be trying out EIM Technologies flagship product, Lab on the Go. So we're going to start with a bit of an unboxing see if I can make a couple of things using this and then I'll give a couple of my thoughts on how it was as an experience for a beginner like me. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a little bit of an unboxing here. We're gonna take off this kind of black and blue sleek cover and see all the pieces that are contained here. Tangible and effective solution for technology education? I hope so, but we're gonna find out. Okay. Lab on the go, it calls itself a starter guy. And it's not too thick, which I like. It's got a lot of pictures, a lot of graphics. That is going to be super useful for me. And this, this is the main prize, I guess. Feels nice. It seems pretty high quality and it's lighter than I expected. So we're going to set this aside and get this thing open. Wow, okay. <laughs> There's a lot packed in the side here. That is a lot of different things. We're gonna get those all out, but I think the main four things are here. So, don't really know what these are, but I like that they're kind of snugly put into these foam cutouts. Um, have like even these little divots there that help take things out very easily. And so these are the main four sort of tools, I guess and we're gonna take everything else out. So a lot of different things from accessories to the devices to parts that can make up a circuit. And so now I'm gonna look through the star guide a little bit and then just try to start making some things. Okay, so here's me building one of the early projects from the starter guide. And it's on speed up because the whole thing took a little bit and I'm really just talking about how nice it feels to slide wires into the little holes. Um, but this is a pretty simple circuit. It's just turning on an LED, but instead of using a switch, you turn it on by touching the tips of wires, which I thought was pretty cool. So I'm just following the picture here, putting everything in. The other thing that's new about it, you can see on the left diagram that it says nine volts on the power supply picture. And everything so far has been five volts. That's how the power supply came. So I needed to figure out a way to change it. I flip through the starter guide. I eventually find where to change the voltage. And it's very simple, very easy to follow. I kind of take these blue screwdrivers here and just sort of twist a knob in the side. And it's the first time I've changed a setting physically. So that was pretty cool. Then I go to test it. I'm a little nervous because I'm connecting my skin to wires but it doesn't work anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I remember that the LED is sometimes backward. That happened in an earlier project, so I tried flipping that around and trying it again. If that didn't work, I'd be confused, but it did work, so that was cool. Then I decided I wanted to experiment a little bit and try separate hands, one wire each, and that also worked, which kind of freaked me out because then it's like the electricity is traveling across my entire body kind of blew my mind, but that was one of my favorite projects. I ended up doing quite a few from the Lab on the Go starter guide, and so you'll hear from me about that in a second. Okay, so it's been a day, placed everything back in the case, and you know, everything kind of just fits nicely back into its original packaging, so it can stay nice and orderly in here. So far, it's all been fully reusable. Um, but that's about all I can say on the hardware side of things because I just don't have the expertise to talk about it too much, which is a shame because this really is like the main thing that I'm getting from Lab on the Go, but I don't know specs. I don't really know what else to compare this to, so I'm not going to be able to offer any sort of objective rating or recommendation. What I can talk about is my own experiences as a beginning student with Lab on the Go. And trying to make my way through the starter guide, I really had one major question for it, which was, will I be able to complete this without having to seek any sort of outside resources? And it was, it passed the test for me. I didn't have to ask anyone for help. I didn't have to look anything up online. Well, except for the pronunciation of oscilloscope 
and whenever there was a problem with a circuit or something, I could always find the solution somewhere in here. Now that said, this is very much just a starter guide. It's accompanying this, which is really what Lab on the Go is. And the projects in here, there aren't that many of them. They're not very step-by-step. -step. They don't go into the underlying principles or anything. And so as a result, sometimes I would feel a little bit lost as a beginner, not knowing where to start, not knowing where to look for what might have gone wrong. And I kind of had to brute force my way through any sort of issue. So this helped me build my first circuits and it helped me get familiar with the tools that are in here, but it's very much not on its own exactly what I need in terms of this sort of guided, structured, comprehensive learning experience. That I was able to find more when I started adding in basic electric circuits, which is a separate kit that EIM sells. It's fully compatible with and it's intended to be used alongside the Lab on the Go hardware. And this is where some of the learning really took place and where I started to see the full value of Lab on the Go because this actually is a lot more in depth. There are a lot more projects and it just kind of has everything step-by-step. Step. It goes into the science of things so I know not just what I need to do, but why I need to do it. And it talks about everything in a way that's very easy to follow. It's orderly, it's structured, and it's a very cohesive experience that's great for a beginner like me so that I know just exactly where I should be, how to follow along every little piece. So didn't feel lost when I was doing this and became suddenly more aware of the value of Lab on the Go because the more I was doing projects beyond the starter guide, the more value I was getting out of these tools. I was using all these functions that I hadn't used before and there's a lot more functions still in here that I haven't used yet. So I know there's a lot more to discover, a lot more to do, and a lot of value to get out of these tools. So for me, that's what seems like it's gonna make the most sense. It worked great for me just pairing Lab on the Go hardware with some of these other resources that are out there, like basic electric circuits, or some other kits that I know EIM has that is also intended to go alongside Lab on the Go. I think this makes sense for anyone who's ready to take the plunge, maybe also people who have kids or students that they wanna fully support and equip in a long sort of studying process. Now, I have a clear image of what things are gonna look like. I have some confidence that I'm gonna be well equipped for the foreseeable future, and I know what to look forward to. So that's a lot of thanks to Lab on the Go. And the final thing I want to mention is just that as someone who's tried to learn things both as a child and now as an adult on my own, especially on my own, having some sort of tangible feedback really is such a big game changer. I mean, having something in my hands that I can work with, that I can play around with, experiments with, problem solve with, and then getting the feedback when I do things right, things will light up, things will happen that are cool um, that really is so valuable to me in knowing that I did things right knowing that I'm ready to move on to the next step and just providing some amount of satisfaction so it's pretty addicting and that's been my experience with Lab on the Go I hope it can be yours as well